Hey guys, welcome back to the Sun Devil Learning Lab. I'm so excited to have you guys back here learning with us, whether this is your first time or your hundredth time. Hello, welcome. I am so excited for you guys to be here. For those of you who do not know me, or maybe you know me and you've just forgotten my name this whole time, it's fine happens, whatever. <laughs> uh, my name is Miss Wendy. I work on the third grade ELA team alongside Miss Martinez. As you can tell, Miss Martinez is not here today, um, but I'm sure we will be filming a, a video together very soon. We love filming together. We love teaching together, so it will not be long until you see her again. So for those of you who maybe do not know what the Sun Devil Learning Lab is, maybe this is your first time ever joining us, or if it's your hundredth time and you just like hearing my introduction, first of all, thank you. Second of all, the Sun Devil Learning Lab was created in response to the current coronavirus with the shutting down of schools across the nation and across the world. Um, we just want to make sure that you guys were still continuing your education, even though you weren't necessarily in a typical class setting. We made these videos basically just to supplement what your original teacher is telling you, and we just wanted to continue your education safely from home. Whether you are one of my students who was in my class, hello guys, I miss you so much, or if you're a new st student joining us remotely, welcome. I am so excited to have you guys here with me today, and I am excited to teach you guys our lesson for the day. So with that being said, let's get started on the lesson today. As you guys can tell from the PowerPoint, our lesson is on illustrations that create a mood in the story. So it doesn't want to work. There we go. So our goal for the day, or our I can statement, is, well, it's not an I can statement today, I guess. <laughs> our objective is I will, or I can, use illustrations and text to determine the mood of a story. Now, I'm pretty sure we all know what those words in the objective mean, but I'm going to go over them a little bit in a little bit, just a little bit further so that you know we all have the same base understanding of what they mean. So, some prior knowledge. Guys, look at these two pictures right here. Without even looking at the words right there, we can look at those faces and we can determine how they're feeling. Isn't that crazy? It's not even something we think about every day. It's something we just naturally do in our heads. So, if I was to look at this lady right here, don't look at the words. Don't look at the words. Look at what you do. <laughs> And if we just looked at her picture, how would you say she's feeling? Does she seem angry? Eh, no. Does she seem scared to you guys? I'd say probably not. Does she seem happy to you guys? Yeah, I'd say she looks pretty happy to me. Wait, but why? Why do I think she looks happy? Can anyone tell me that? I know, I know that she's happy, but why do I know that she's happy? Oh, if we look in the picture, we can see that she's smiling. Is that so? Wait, let me look at the... That's a great idea. That's how you can tell that someone's happy because they're smiling. Oh my gosh. Great job, guys. You were able to just infer how she was feeling based on that photo. How about let's look over at this little guy right here. Mm. How do you think he's feeling? Does he look happy? Let's look at those two pictures together. Are they both, are they both happy? Mm, no. I'd say she's definitely happy, but I don't know about our poor friend over here. What about scared? Does he look scared? Potentially. He might be a little scared. When you see someone that looks like that, how are they usually feeling? Oh, I hear some of you guys are saying sad. Okay, why are you saying that he seems sad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you look at him in the picture, he's crying over here. So we can infer, even though we aren't talking to these people, we don't know these people at all, we can infer how they are feeling just by looking at these pictures. So how would we complete that sentence down there? I think this boy is feeling 
sad. Okay. I think this boy is feeling sad because, because he is crying. Okay. Let's see how that compares with our other sense with the late, with the lady over here. I think this girl is feeling happy because she is smiling. I think this boy is feeling sad because he is crying. Those sound pretty good to me. And we are able to infer how they are feeling. All right, so let's move on to some definitions of what we're talking about today. All right, so just like those photos, those photos of real life people, an illustration is a picture. Can you believe it? An illustration is a picture. It may not be a photo of someone taken in real life, but just like our little smiley faces down here, it's a picture. And remember guys, good readers pay attention to both pictures and words when they read. So let's go over this, let's quick review. What's an illustration? Okay, it's a picture. All right, and good readers, what do good readers do about illustrations? Do we just push them off to the side and say, I don't need no illustrations. Did we say that? No, it says right here. Good readers pay attention to both pictures and words when they read. Good job, guys. They're in the book for a reason. The illustrations bring the words to life. They're an important part of the book, I promise you. They may just look pretty, but they're an important part of the book as well. Okay, so, as I said, an illustration is a picture. Illustrations can actually show how characters feel. So let's look at this photo right down here. We have a man chilling out in a hammock. So look at that picture. How do we think that man is feeling? Just based on the picture. Would you say that he looks scared? Does he look like he's in a haunted house or anything like that? No, I wouldn't say he looks that scared. Does he look excited? No. Hmm. What other words on this list can we knock out? Does he look happy or sad? Not really. If we look at his face right here, he's not smiling or crying, so that's a pretty good sign. Hmm, what about, what about this one right here? Does he look, guys, does he look tired to you? Hmm, what do we usually do when we're tired? Oh, we usually try and go to sleep. Okay, well, let's look at our guy in the picture. Oh, would you look at that, guys? He's sleeping. So based off that, I would say this guy is tired. And just like with this, let's phrase it like these sentences were down here. So I think this man is feeling tired because, why do you think he's tired? Oh, because he's sleeping, he's sleeping in a hammock. Okay, yeah, that makes sense why he's feeling tired. Good job, guys. Nice little practice right there. Let's real quick review what the definition said right here. What can illustration, or review what the concept is down here. Illustrations can show what? Look at the mouse if you don't know. Yeah, they can show how characters feel. Guys, without using any words whatsoever, like do y'all see any words in this picture? I don't. So without using any words, the illustrator was able to show us how this person felt. Isn't that crazy? We didn't use a single word when inferring what his mood was. Good job, guys. Illustrations, so in addition to showing what characters can feel, illustrations can also, also, there it is, show what the setting looks like. So. Who can tell me what the, let's review real quick, what is the setting of a story? It is where and when, good job, the story takes place. So let's look at this picture right here. Looks like we got a big sun right here, maybe some mountains in the back, a house right in the middle, a hill, and that looks like a city skyline in the back maybe. So let's look at that. Hmm. How does that picture make us feel? What words do we associate with that setting? Do I look at that and think, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a scary story about monsters and this and that, and it's gonna be really scary. Nah, 
no, not really. Do I look at that and think, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a sad story. Look at it. That picture just brings me so much sadness. Probably not. But do I look at that and think, oh my gosh, that illustration is so cheerful. It is so sunny and beautiful that day. I'd say so, yeah. So the illustration, again, just like with the guy in the hammock, there are no words in this picture. And we were still able to infer what the setting looked like. Guys, that's pretty awesome. So let's just review, re review real quick. In addition to telling us how people feel sometimes, illustrations can show what? Yeah, they can show what the setting looks like. Good job. And it says here settings can be just like we talked about up here. Settings can be beautiful, sunny, cheerful, dark, dangerous, scary. Um, trying to think of some other ones. Gloomy. That's definitely one that we can use in a story. But good job, guys. All right. And then what we're going to talk about, we talked about this a little bit in our objective for the day. Ultimately, what we are doing is determining the mood of a story. For, so just quick review. I know a lot of you know what mood is, but mood is the feeling of a story. This could be happy, excited, sad, angry, peaceful, afraid, spooky, silly, et cetera, et cetera. So these words that were right here in our other two, so we have happy, sad, excited, afraid, bored, silly, angry, tired. Let me go over this one. Beautiful, sunny, cheerful, dark, dangerous, scary. Those are all mood words. When I look at this picture, how do I feel? That's the mood. Mood is the feeling of a story. So what we're gonna do is we are going to move on and I want you guys to use the illustration right here and I'm going to read the passage right here. We're just gonna model real quick so I can show you how it's done. So they are going, so it says up here, illustrations and text work together to create the mood or the feeling of the story. Melissa and Joey were starting summer camp. They were so excited. The first thing they decided to do was to take a ride in the canoes. They smiled as they rode along. They really enjoyed looking at the beautiful mountains. Let's look at our picture over here if you weren't doing that before. Here we have Melissa and Joey rowing in, the canoe, in their canoe. Beautiful blue day, few clouds in the sky, but that's okay, everyone looks happy. It looks like they're smiling in the canoe. Hint, hint. All right, so let's look go down to our chart right here so we have it broken up into characters and settings and we're going to be determining what the picture says as well as the words so as you guys can see here the characters how are they in the picture yeah they're smiling and let's go back how are the characters in the word with in the passage <laughs> there we go hmm let's enjoy we're starting summer camp they were so excited so we're going to put right here they were, they were so excited, All right? So that, that's what we know about our characters. From the picture, we can tell that they are smiling. And from the words, we can tell that they're excited. So let's move on to the setting. Let's look at the setting in the picture. Hmm. Like I said earlier, we have some green grass, some flowers. It looks very peaceful. So we're gonna put, there is green grass and flowers. And then let's read the passage again, looking specifically in terms of setting. During summer camp, they were so excited. The first thing they said to do was take a ride in the canoe. They smiled as well. They really enjoyed looking at the beautiful mountains. So we know in the setting, based on those words, that there are beautiful mountains. Okay. So let's take all the information that we learned today about the characters and settings that we learned through the pictures and words. Let's think, hmm, what kind of mood does this story set? I agree guys, I would say this sets a pretty happy tone. Not only can I look in the picture and find evidence of that by them smiling, but I can also use the words to help me because they say words like, they were so excited. They smiled as they rode along. They really enjoyed looking at the beautiful mountains. So we know that the mood is happy. Good job guys. 
right, let's move on to the next slide. So this one is, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look at characters and settings in terms of the pictures and the words. So let's look at this picture over here. It looks like we have a man snorkeling in the ocean next to some suspicious fin. Is it a shark? Is it a dolphin? I don't know. Let's see. Let me read the passage now. Sam was snorkeling in Hawaii when suddenly he felt something move past him. He peeked over the edge of the water. Suddenly, he saw a shark fin pass right by him. All right, so let's look in the picture. So let's start with the characters. So looking at the picture, how does he look in the picture? Yeah, he looks pretty scared. I know you can barely see him, but you can see his eyes are kind of bugging a little bit. He's kind of thinking, Good job. How about in words? How do the words describe the character? It's, yeah, it says he's pretty nervous because he felt something move past him. When you feel something suspicious move past you, do you sometimes get a little nervous? I know I do. Okay, so then let's move on to the setting. So let's look at the setting from the picture. What do we see, guys? Yeah. We see that there's a shark fin right here in the ocean. <gasps> so scary. What about in the words? Let's read the words, specifically looking for the setting. Hmm. Okay, snorkeling in Hawaii, we know that much. He felt something move past him. <gasps> Suddenly he saw a shark fin pass right by him. Ah, that's so scary. Let's put that in our chart right there for setting and words. Now, guys, just as we did in the previous one, we're gonna take everything we, co we collected in these boxes, and we're gonna think, hmm, what mood does this portray? We have the boy looked worried. He felt something move past him. The ocean has a shark swimming in it, and suddenly he saw a shark fin pass right by him. When you guys are in the ocean and you see a shark, if y'all have ever been in the ocean, do you feel happy when you see that shark? Probably not. I wouldn't if I was swimming right by one. I would feel kind of afraid. Do you think that's how Sam felt? I'd say so. So I'd say the mood of the story is afraid. All right, guys. So now what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you do this on your own. You are going to look at the character using pictures and words, and you're gonna look at the setting using pictures and words. And then you are going to, or we together are going to develop the mood of the story. So let's all look at this picture right here. We have a boy, head kind of slumped on a train, looks to be raining outside. Let's look at that for a little bit, start thinking, gathering ideas in our heads. And I'm gonna read the passage. Jason was home on a winter day. It was raining and there were raindrops on his window. He couldn't go outside. There was nothing to do. All right, guys, so what do we notice about the character in the picture? Yeah, his head's kind of slumped. He's looking out the window. He doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on. But what do we know about our character from the words? We see that he was home on a winter day. He couldn't go outside, and he couldn't find anything to do. So we know that our character looks pretty bored. He appears to be pretty bored from the picture, and the words confirm that he had nothing to do. So how about our setting? What do we see from the picture? How does the setting look? Yeah, it looks kind of gloomy. There's a lot of rain. Kinda, I kind of get like a, like a cold feeling, like I physically feel cold looking at that. How about the words? How do the words explain the setting? Oh, it says right here, it was raining and there were raindrops on his window. That's a pretty good explanation of the setting. I can picture myself in, Jason, in Jason's shoes right there watching a rainy day. All right, so what we're gonna do is let's take those four pieces of evidence that we gathered and let's think, let's put our heads together. What would we say is the mood of the story? Is this a super exciting story with laser beams and superheroes and a bunch of exciting stuff happening? 
No, I'd say probably not. I honestly get kind of a really, I get a, I get a bored vibe from this. Jason's just sitting there and he's just bored out of his mind because he's got nothing to do. What do you guys think? Do you guys think bored might be the mood of the story? Let's check and see if we're right. So we have, so we did get that it was a bored mood. Good job, guys. So like I said, looking for characters, looking in the picture, he looks bored. He appears physically to be bored. We know from the words that he couldn't go outside. We know the setting from the picture that it's raining and wet outside. And from the words we knew that there were raindrops on his window. So what we're gonna do, we're combining all those together and we find out what our mood is and our mood is that Jason is bored. Good job, guys. Okay, so this one is a you do. So this one is all you. So let's look, let's look at our picture right here. First, we're going to describe the character or you guys are gonna describe the characters describe the setting, and then describe the mood of the story. Let's look at our picture. Looks to be a little kid. He might be watching the moon. I see something, something flying across the moon. I'll leave it at that while I read the passage. It is the night before Christmas and it is snowing. Matt is filled with anticipation. He can't wait until tomorrow. Matt sets out cookies for Santa. He looks out the window and suddenly he sees an amazing sight. Bum, bum, bum. I wonder what it could be. So if you guys want to pause the video right here so you can break down the character using pictures and words and break down the setting using pictures and words, that will help you ultimately come to the mood of the story. So feel free to pause the video right now. All right, for my friends that are back after we have paused the video and filled out our work, I filled this out as well, so I just want to compare my answers with mine. Again, they don't have to be word for word exactly the same, but the same general concept is okay. So, I put looking in the picture, just looking at the picture, I can tell that Matt is watching Santa Claus. And then we look at the words, it says right here, Matt is filled with anticipation. And if you guys don't know what that means, it's basically excitement. He's super excited about something, but we don't know what yet in the story. So that's what we know about the character. And then let's go on to the setting. So let's look at that picture right there. Hmm, what can I tell about the setting? I said, it's snowing and it's nighttime because the moon is out. And then let's look at what the words say. So our setting is, it's the night before, it is the night before Christmas and it is snowing. Pretty easy, right off the bat. The first sentence explains our setting. So what I'm gonna do, take those four pieces, mumble them together, hmm. What mood do I get? Imagine that you're in Matt's shoes. How do you feel about everything? Yeah, I would say I feel super excited. Think about it, guys, if you're in Matt's shoes and you look up and you see the man you've been waiting for, you see Santa Claus, I would be so excited about that. So that is our mood for the story. So our closure, we are almost on our lesson. You guys are crushing it, great job. We just have a short little agree or disagree that you guys are going to talk over with someone wherever you are and we'll see if we agree or disagree. So Alex thinks that the mood of this illustration and story is angry. Do you agree or disagree with Alex? Let's look at the picture. We have a guy here kind of hunched up in a ball. He looks maybe like defensive. He might be a little hurt. Let's see what the passage says. Jeremy wishes he could play on the football team. The tryouts were yesterday. However, he accidentally forgot about the tryouts. He felt so bad about it. He felt like he was going to cry. And then how you guys are going to format it is you're going to say, I agree or I disagree with Alex because, and just like we did with these stories here, I want you to point, describe the character using pictures and words, as well as describe the setting using pictures and words, and then combine the four of them together and come out with the mood of the story. So I'm gonna leave this here if you guys want to pause the video to read the story again and see the character. And that is the conclusion of our lesson. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. You guys did a great job today. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and I will see you guys on the next lesson. Bye guys!